Hi, welcome to Let's Play Clue, and we're going to play to win. This is how to beat your friends every time, either on the board game or the app. If you're a first-time player of Clue, try my other um, video on how to play Clue. This is how to win at Clue. So let's get going. We're going to play all six characters on their hardest level. I'm going to play as Scarlet, and everyone else is on hard. Nope, I want to make sure that green's on hard. Start game. So, I love the app because it's so organized. Uh, it lets you play quickly. I like the design. We went to the, room, the house with nine rooms. All the players are up on the top, as you're going to see in a second. I'm on the bottom. And they take a suspect, a weapon, and a room card, put it in the envelope, put the envelope away, distribute all the other cards. My three cards are on the bottom. If you see, I click U down there, and I've got Peacock, I've got the Hall, and I've got the Study. Three cards, and it's important to know that I only have three cards, because as you play this game, you want to try to figure out everyone else's three cards. Um, I love the ledger here. It's already crossed off Peacock. It's already crossed off Hall and Study since I have those. And also, if you notice right above the word suspect, there's the circle, the mustard colored circle, the magenta circle, green, blue, purple. That's for each of the opponents you're playing. So each of those columns you're able to make notes, an X, a red X if they don't have it, a um, a green check mark if they do have it, or little annotations, question marks, exclamations, like little notes that you're going to make. And I'm going to teach you how to write those notes so that you can listen to everyone's turn and every time get information out of the questions that everybody asks. Because to win this game is not about you asking, it's about listening to other people ask questions. So might as well start to go into something like the ballroom, nice and close. And let's, you can bluff. I mean, I have Mrs. Peacock, and I could try to throw everybody off with Mrs. Peacock. Oh, let's do that. Remember, I have that one, remember? And let's then pick, I don't have any weapons, so let's pick the candlestick. We know no one's going to have Peacock. And what I want to get is I want to get people to pass, having no answers. Um, X's. X. Yep, and then the green means she has something. What does she have? She has the candlestick. But we learned a little bit of information before I end my turn. Look here on the ledger now. I had we learned um, that Mrs. Or Dr. Orchid has the candlestick, so she has that green check mark. Everybody else has an X because they don't have that. And if you come down here, we learned that um, because Mustard didn't have any of the cards, he didn't have the ballroom, so they automatically put an X there. That's great. And the turn now, just because it's not our turn. I'm going to ask you to watch this whole video, and it's a little long because we're going to play the whole game, but we're going to learn so much watching everybody else play. So let's go. So he, so Mustard is in the lounge, guessing Orchid and Candlestick. Well, we already know, based on the last turn, that Orchid, that Dr. Orchid had that Candlestick. See? So we know what, we know what she showed. So let's keep moving. But you want to try to figure out, as everyone takes a turn and everyone guesses, what are they bluffing? Were they? Uh, and what did the person show them if they had something? And if they didn't have something, use that information. So she's guessing plum, rope, dining room, and green has all three of those things. So here's what we're going to do. Because we know Mr. Green had one of those three cards, we're going to put like a little annotation on all those three cards. Plum, rope, or dining room. Now as we play the game and we find out what players have those other cards, we'll be able to come back to this and figure out which of those three cards we actually had. He's going to the lounge. I love corners, by the way, because um, if you get a low roll uh, on the next turn, to be in a corner, you can always use the secret passageway. So he's guessing mustard, wrench, and lounge, to which the neighbor has it. So let's do the same thing we just did on Mrs. Peacock. She either had mustard with the one, she either had the wrench with the one, or she had the lounge with the one. Great, let's keep going. We're getting information as we play this game with every single person's turn. What I like to do is cross my fingers that no one 
really uh, forces me to show a card because the longer you can hide a card, the better chances you have of winning. So Peacock is saying Scarlet, Wrench, Conservatory, and Plum has those. So let's do like we just did. Scarlet, one, or the Wrench, one, or the Conservatory, one. We now know that each of those people have one of those three cards. Okay, now it's going to be Plum's turn. Please don't pick one of my three cards. I don't want to show my cards. Don't go to the study. Don't go. Okay, dining room. Orchid. I don't have any of those cards. Okay. Neither does Mustard. Neither does Orchid, but Green does. Great. Before we advance, let's go back and just understand our information here. You see now, <clears throat> they've put those X's where Mustard and Orchid didn't have the card for, the, for Dr. Orchid. Great. You'll also notice they did it for the lead pipe, and they also did it for the dining room. But let's go back. Green showed a card, and he had either orchid, lead pipe, and dining room. Notice the ones we did last time? There's no one in that Dr. Orchid line. There's no one in that lead pipe line. But there is a one in that dining room line. So it's possible that that was the card that he showed last time. Yes, it's also possible that he has more than one card, but I'm going to up the ante and say he that's that's possibly it. Now, what else am I going to do? Because I know he has either Orchid, Lead Piper, Dining Room, I'm also now going to put in all three of those a two. Orchid, Lead Pipe, Dining Room. <clears throat> I know he has one from the ones, and he has one from the twos. It's possible that it's the same card, which is why I put that question mark there. So let's keep going. Oh, it's my turn again. Well, it went all, went all the way around very fast. Ah, the low numbers. Let's see what rooms I can get to. Well, as you can see, not many, but I can get to corners, which is always good. I'm going to go with the conservatory, because I like to stay in the corners. And let's be smart about what we're guessing here. Let's try to figure out, once and for all, what Green has. I'm going to guess Dr. Orchard, and he's either going to show me that Orchid card, and therefore see that too, or not. And let's guess wrench. So we're going to go orchid and wrench. And I want to go with the wrench because um, those other players possibly have a wrench. So let's see what happens. Oh, I know what you're showing me, the conservatory. And I hate when the person right next to me has the card because I don't get chances to see no's, and no's is the X's, and X's is the information. So, thank you for showing me that the conservatory is not it. The only silver lining to it is, is that at least I now know one of your cards. Very low roll. So he uses the secret passage. Well, we know you have the conservatory already. Scarlet and Dagger. Well, so let's go back here. We, just to go, show you what I said before, we knew he had the conservatory. Um, so he either, so Dr. Orchid either has Scarlet or the Dagger. So let's go ahead and put uh, the little annotation numbers there too. Scarlet, a one, and a Dagger, the one. Now, what's also interesting is we already know she has the candlestick. So, of the three cards that she's hiding, we know one of them for sure. We know one of them is either Scarlet or Dagger. We really only need to kind of figure out what her third card could possibly be, and we can then eliminate all the rest of the cards from her column because we know she doesn't have them. Conservatory. We know she has the conservatory. Uh, I mean, we, we know Mustard has a conservatory. Wow. Wow, wow. So we just learned a lot here, folks. She guessed Mustard, Rope, Conservatory, and nobody had any of them all the way around to Mustard. But with Mustard, we already knew that Mustard had the conservatory. 
So unless he actually is sitting on these other cards, he, we, these, it's very like, or she's bluffing, it's very likely we've got some really good information here. So we're going to go ahead and do what we've already done, which is put in our little number system. We're going to come back here and we're going to say that he either had the rope, uh, I'm sorry, mustard, or the rope, or the conservatory. And I know he's already got the conservatory, so most likely that's what he had but I'm not totally, totally willing to be convinced yet. But I also want to notice, look, the conservatory down here, That see that one? Um, remember when we put the ones here? We now realize if that's not the one, then we'll take it out. But basically, either that wrench or Mrs. Scarlet is in Plum's hand. And also, if you look here at this line, the rope, Mr. Green had that one. And we had either the one of the plum, the one of the rope, or the one he doesn't have that. So now we're starting to focus in on those. Um, and you want to keep track of that stuff because that's going to start to become really important. Here, Colonel Mustard. We had a one because we thought Mrs. Peacock had third of mustard. She doesn't have it. What other ones does she have? Well, that was the wrench and the lounge. So she's definitely got one of those two. Let's take that number one off. This is the important thing, is to start to focus down those numbers because we're eventually going to use that to get most of our information. Okay. Mr. Green's turn, gets a six, goes to the dining room. We're going to start to, on every turn now, really focus this down. Scarlet, wrench, and again, who has it, who doesn't? Plum does. So let's come back here. We already had suspected that he had the scarlet, because there's a one. We also suspected that he had the wrench, because there's another one. We took the third one off, so we know he has one or the other. And therefore, the in the dining room. From the looks of it, it seems to me that Mr. Green was bluffing with the dining room, because we believe he probably has it. And he was trying to figure out which of those two cards Plum had. Okay, into the ballroom. Plum, dagger, and here we go. So now we've learned that there's a new set of options that Plum has. Either Plum has his own card, Plum, or the dagger, or the ballroom. So we had those little ones annotated, so now we're going to have to put in twos just to not be confused. Plum, dagger, ballroom. But what we do know is he has one of the one cards and one of the two cards, and if we can just figure out that third card, we have his cards. Kitchen. <gasps> Don't ask for the peacock. Oh, you did. That's my card. I have to show it. Oh, well. I hate showing my cards. Anyways, it's my turn now. And let's roll and see what rooms we can get to based on our roll. And then figure out the most logical move. Based on a six, the rooms we can get to are... The dining room, the kitchen, or the lounge. I feel like if we went to the dining room, we would just learn once and for all that Green had the dining room. And that would be interesting, but it's not enough information for me. So I'd rather know more about the lounge or the kitchen. So let's go to the lounge. And as far as what we're going to guess, we already learned that Colonel Mustard um, and the rope were two very good choices. So we're going to find out once and for all who's got those. 
And if no, and if the first two people, mustard and orchid, don't have it, then I think we can safely say they're the sus. We have information. Perfect. I already can tell you we're going to have some really good information here. She had the lounge. But before we move ahead, look what we've got here. We now know that nobody has kernel mustard. Let's before we move ahead. We now that nobody has the rope, therefore we now have kernel mustard. We now have the rope. And we also learned who has the lounge. But before we move ahead, the most important thing here is, remember he had the conservatory when we put that one? Well, he definitely didn't have the rope. We can take off that one. And he definitely didn't have the mustard, so we can take off that one. Let's come down here to this wrench on Peacock. We see that she suspected at one point she had the wrench. There's now an X on it. So what were the other ones? Well, she came through with the lounge. So by coming through with that lounge, she most likely didn't have that wrench. And we now know that she had that lounge. Now, let's come over here and show that since we now know that she has got, I'm sorry, we, we now have the two, two, okay, so that's good. We're gonna end our turn knowing we have kernel mustard and knowing we have the rope. I was trying to hope for some more information about what room we could be in. And I'm pretty sure the dining room is not a room that's gonna matter. And the ball, the ballroom, I have a two there, but at the same time, until we know who, um, if Plum has that dagger or Professor Plum, we have to assume that he could still have the ballroom. So our choices of which room, which is the only thing left we have to figure out, is still one in four odds. Let's hope that by the time our turn comes around again, we've solved it. Because we're very close, folks. Now would be a good time for us to try to throw people off the path, too, if they haven't figured out what we've figured out. Paul, which we have, mustard, <coughs> and rope. And as you can see, a lot of people are already figuring out what everybody has and doesn't have. By him asking mustard and rope, it's sort of telling me that everyone kind of knows those two things. So this might be a, a game where everyone goes around just going into different rooms trying to figure out what the last room is. Um, so we have to pay close attention to the rooms here, folks. Billiard room. Well, it seems like this person is a little bit behind. They're still asking about Scarlet and the dagger, but let's go here. They're asking about Scarlet. They're asking about the dagger and the billiard room. Might as well use our number system, even though we only know one of their um, rooms. We know... We know they don't have Scarlet, so we might as well put a one here for the dagger and a one here for the billiard room and continue. We have to figure out this last room before our turn so we, that we can make the final accusation to win the game. Well, let's see. Let's go to the kitchen. Let's see who's got a kitchen. Are you going to put in mustard and rope too? Nope. But you are going to put in rope. Okay, good information here, <clears throat> because we know that Mustard, who showed one of those three cards, doesn't have Orchid, and we know that he doesn't have Rope, therefore, he definitely showed the kitchen. So we can put an X there in the kitchen. We now know he has the kitchen. We know he has the conservatory. <coughs> um, so we only need to find out one more of his cards. So that was good information. Um, I just want to see if we've made any progress in anything else. The thing that others also is interesting to me is we know that Dr. Orchid is not the suspect, but only one person has not been asked about that card. So we can tell you for sure that Dr. Orchid, Mr. Green has Dr. Orchid because there's no way there's two suspect cards in the envelope. So by putting that two there, it also means he probably doesn't have this two. So we can take that out, or we can make an X there. Probably doesn't have it. 
And if we look down at his ones and twos, by taking that two out, we almost obviously now can officially say he had that dining room, and therefore take that out. And I can take the, the one and two out if it's a, a little confusing. But you see what we've done here is we've used um, the deductive reasoning to figure out what his cards are. Let's move ahead. Okay, to the kitchen. Everyone's still working on the kitchen. We're open mustard, we know. Um, okay, just like we had known before, mustard is nothing, rope is nothing, and it has to be the kitchen coming from that guy. What's interesting to me, though, is why Mrs. Peacock would ask that. What? Is she still curious about the rooms? We have now limited down to one, two, three rooms. The ballroom, the billiard room, and the library. Hopefully we can get that answered before our turn. If, if Plum could just eliminate one of those three remaining rooms for us, then on our last turn, we could figure out which room it was. Study. I've got the study. You're not going to get any information out of me. I'm just going to give you the study. Okay, folks. So before we take our turn, our last turn, and we're going to make a final accusation on this turn, we know it's mustard. We know it's the rope. What we don't know is which of these three rooms it is. Ballroom, billiard room, and library. Now, before we go ahead and roll the dice, well, actually, take it back. Let's roll the dice. Let's see what, which of those three rooms we can get into, because we have to make a guess on one of those. Well, we can get to all of them. So let's make sure we are really smart about this. And the way that we're going to be smart about this is by looking at what everybody else but their cards are. Let's start with the first column, Mustard. We know two of his three cards. We know he's got Conservatory <coughs> and Kitchen. We don't know his third card. Does he have Billiard or Library? Possibly. Let's look at the second column. Let's look at Orchid. We actually only know one of her, one of her cards or the two cards, either Scarlet or Dagger. We, she may or may not have one of those three. Um, we know one, two of P Green's cards. We know one, only one. That's unfortunately we don't have a whole lot of information here when it comes to these rooms, so we're gonna almost have to take a guess. What we can do is we can either go to the ballroom, the billiard room, or the library. It's a one-third chance that nobody has them, and if nobody has them, we won. If somebody has it then it's a 50-50 guess. So let's go to the library. And the reason I'm going to go to the library is it's the only card that I don't suspect maybe somebody has. We're going to guess the library. We're going to guess mustard and the rope, which we already know. Mustard and the rope, which we already know nobody has. And all we can do is cross our fingers and hope that nobody has the library. Nobody, 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 nobody. Bang. Nobody has that library. We did it. We're going to win the game. Final accusation. Mrs. Scarlet's going to make an accusation. That's us. We are going to go with mustard. We are going to go with rope. And we are going to go with library. Accuse. Open that envelope. And... Mustard, Rope, Library. We just beat all the players on the highest level. Um, we did have to make a guess at the end, but we made a really well calculated guess at the end because it was the only room that we knew nobody had ever possibly asked about. And that's how you play the advanced version of Clue. I've got three games here. Um, watch me beat them all.